What is the easiest way to set up a zoomable scope effect in your Godot game? Let's find it out in this video. And recently I'm covering a lot of advanced topics so today I decided to hit the brakes a bit and I also realized that my last Visual Shader tutorial was almost half a year ago. Hence in this tutorial, I'm going to use Visual Shader. For the tutorial, I will be using Godot 4.3 and I'm also using an add-on called ShaderLib. In the scene, first I will create a Mesh Instance 3D node. It will be our crosshair. Select Quad Mesh. And if you're wondering why I'm making a 3D node rather than some UI element, then good question. I will answer that in a bit. First, let's create a Visual Shader. Set the mode spatial. I will call it scope. Then in the inspector, expand this flag section. Check unshaded. I don't want my crosshair to interact with lights. Then let's also create a shader material. Assign our shader to our material. Finally, apply the material to the crosshair. In the shader, I want to see behind my quad. For that, I can use a screen texture. Let's create a texture 2D node. In the drop down, select screen. And this texture is currently being sampled with the screen UV. Then if I feed it into the albedo, I've successfully made my quad transparent. Now to zoom in, I can multiply screen UV with values that are less than one. So if I take screen UV, Multiply it with let's say 0 0.8 and feed the result in the UV. I've zoomed in a bit. Now I want to control the zoom from the inspector. So let's create a float parameter. I will call it zoom. Set the hint to range. Let's say I want to zoom from one times up to five times. So minimum 1 and maximum 5. Then set the default value 1. Now in reality, I can zoom in by setting some number that is smaller than 1 here. So for this zoom value to make sense, I will use a divide node. Set 1 into input A and set zoom value in input B. Then take the result and feed it into this input B. Now from the inspector, I can adjust the zoom. And as you can see, I have an issue here. Right now my zoom is being applied from the top left corner of the screen. To fix it, first let's subtract 0.5 from our screen UV. Then do the multiplication. Then let's add back the 0.5 on the result. Now it looks like the issue has been fixed. But in reality, now the zoom is being applied from the center of my screen. So if I move my quad away from the center, then zoom, it breaks again. So to fix that, instead of the 0.5, I need to feed the pivot of my quad as screen UV coordinate. We have nice node position world variable to get the quad position. But as you can guess from the name, it is in world space. In order to get the screen UV coordinate, I need to convert this from world to clip space. So first, let's get view matrix to convert the vector from world space to view space. Then let's get projection matrix. It can be used to convert the vector from view space to clip space. And in the canvas item shader, aka 2D shader, we don't have these three variables. Hence, I'm using a quad as crosser. All right, now let's take projection matrix and feed it into the multiply. Then take view matrix and feed it into input B. Now be careful, do not flip the order here. Then take its output and feed it into transform vector multiply node. Take the world position and feed it into input B. Now here I have quad position in clip space or normalized device coordinates. Clip space will go from minus one to one in both X and Y axis. But our screen UV goes from zero zero to one one. 
So let's remap this value to go from 0 to 1. First, let's multiply it with 0 0.5. Then add 0 0.5. Now I have node position in the screen UV coordinate. Let's use it instead of these 0.5s. And now the zoom will happen from the center of my quad. Pretty cool. Now let's create a simple crosshair texture. You are welcome to use a texture here, but I will generate it procedurally. Let me add ellipse node. This is the node from the add-on shader lib, and I have this nice circle. Let's set width and height to 1. Let me just duplicate it. Here I will set the width and height to 0 0.95 to make the circle a bit smaller. Then I will subtract the smaller circle from the big one. And I have this nice round border. Now let's add a crosshair. So let's create a polar coordinate node. Polar coordinates are circular coordinates where X goes outward and Y goes around. Zoom strength and repeat are tiling for X and Y respectively. Let's take the Y coordinates and feed it into triangle wave node. Another nice node from the add-on which will give triangle waves that goes from minus 1 to 1. Then in the crosshair I want 4 teeth so set repeat to 4. Now I want the teeth in this black part which is negative so let's negate it. Negate node simply multiply the values with minus 1. Then let's feed it into step node. In the edge, let's feed 0 0.95. By the way, you can experiment here. Then let me add these two together. And the teeth are bleeding out of the border. So let's multiply it with big circle. Now I have nice crosshair. Let's color it. I want to apply the color from the inspector, so let's create a color parameter. Let's call it crosshair color. Set black as default color. Then multiply it with crosshair. Now I cannot simply add this on top of my screen color. Why? Well, the texture already have some color. And if I just add 000 on top, I would simply get this green color. So let me take this multiply nodes output and feed it into one minus node. One minus node will subtract whatever value we feed in from one. So in our case, it will invert the colors. Then let's multiply it with our sample screen texture. So I will get this green color in the white parts only. Now I can add my colored crosser on top of this. Then fit the result into the albedo. Then to make the quad shape as circle, I can feed this ellipse nodes output into the alpha. But just not to make the graph spaghetti noodles, I will duplicate it. Then feed it into the alpha. Now I have nice crosshair. Now I can also add some lens distortion effect. For that, let's get our UV. The UVs have origin 0, 0 at the top left. I want it in the middle, so let's subtract 0 0.5. Now I have 0, 0 in the middle. Then let's feed it into the length node. It will give me the length of a vector. It will be 0 at the origin and it increases as we move away. Now I can control this fade with smooth step node. In the edge 0, feed 0 0.8. In the edge 1, feed 0 0.1. I will have this nice fading circle. And if you don't know what smooth step does, I have an entire video about it. You should definitely check that out. But in this case, since edge 0 has bigger value than edge 1, 
it will return 0 if the x value is greater than edge 0, returns 1 if the x value is less than edge 1, and any value that falls between the edges will be interpolated. Now I can multiply it with my zoom parameter here. So I will have original zoom value in the middle and it will be less at the edges, but it will be 0 in this black part. And since I'm using the zoom value as denominator here, I can't feed 0. So before I multiply, let me remap this value to go from 1 to 1.2 instead of 0 to 1. Then let's multiply it with zoom. Then take the output and feed it into the divide node. And I will have this slight distortion. Now I want this crosshair to follow the mouse pointer. So I will make it as child of my camera. Set the transform as 0, 0 and minus 1. And set the rotation to 0, 0, 0. Now the crosshair will face the camera and it will be 1 meter away in Z axis. Now to move the crosshair with mouse, I have this crosshair script. Let me attach it to my crosshair quad. In the script, I have variable for current zoom and a vector 2 for minimum and maximum zoom value. Then I have variables for my camera and shader material. I also have this export variable for zoom sensitivity to control the zoom speed from the inspector. In the ready method, I'm hiding the mouse pointer and locking it within the game window. I'm getting the reference of my camera and material. In the process method, I'm calling move crosshair method, which I will show you in a bit. Then in the unhandled input method, I'm listening for scroll up and scroll down. In the scroll up, I'm adding zoom sensitivity onto the zoom value and clamping it. In scroll down, I'm doing the same thing but subtracting the value. Then I'm calling update material method. Move crosshair method is the custom method where I'm getting the mouse position, converting that to world space using camera's project position method and setting that as the global position of my crosshair. Finally, in the update material method, I'm passing the zoom value to the shader. And if I run my scene, I have nice crosshair and I can zoom in and out. And the crosshair also have some lens distortion effect. Pretty cool. And now if you have suggestions about video topics, pacing or anything, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. I've also covered some advanced topics here. Check them out and I will see you there.